Okay, in this next video, I'm going to talk about techniques that I use for actually segmenting out trachea. Um, again, I cannot emphasize enough getting a, a, a three-button mouse. Um, do not try and use a trackpad to do any of this stuff. Um, you really do need, for instance, I'm using the rightmost button here to zoom in and out, the middle button to zoom around, and then I use the, uh, uh, the left-click button to uh, uh, actually move the mouse around and do things, operations like that. So, um, we are going to pick up from where we left off on the last video, um, and what we really want, what we're really interested in are these. These are the trachea here. These are ones that go, this is the head of Grillo blotta. Um, here are the trachea that go into the head from the thorax. And what we want to have in the end is a nice 3D representation of these trachea here. So um, what we'll do is we'll make, make a new segment, and we'll call it trachea. Um, I'm going to color it something nice for me. Yellow works for me really well. This is also, the body is still colored yellow, but I'll change that later on when I need to see some, when I need to see it with the trachea. Now, the most important thing here is to use this paint tool, but we want to use an editable intensity range that I call this thresholded brush. So what this will do is this will paint the segment only in the range of intensity values that we specify. How we determine that is we kind of do the data probe tool again inside here where we think the trachea is. I think the maximum here is around 22,000 ish. So we want zero. And we'll call it, we'll bump it up a little bit, 23,000. Just to give us a little bit of a extra there. And we want to use a sphere brush. And we'll start around 5% of the area. And then we'll kind of start painting in here and see where things kind of line up. If we start getting, if there's too much noise, this is just to kind of get an initial impression of does this value capture really what we want to. And we'll just kind of paint here in 3D a little bit to get an idea. Is this really what we want to see? At this point, once I'm done a little bit, and I always use always look at things in all three views bump here a little bit a little bit here Not like that now there's a little bit of a hole in here that's in the middle of the trachea and I probably want to get that that's inside the trachea lumen so that's somewhere around 24 25,000 so at this point I'll probably bump this up to like 25,000 and then I'll repaint these in a little bit so it fills in better. That's nicer. And paint this here so it fills in a little better. And so on. And that's good enough. Here and here. Now at this point, I will take a look in 3D. I generally don't have 3D turned on all the time because it is CPU intensive. Uh, if you have a really fast CPU or really fast graphics card, um, you can leave it turned on all the time depending on the complexity of your model so again once you do this uh, if if you turn on 3d and things don't show up this will recenter your view so things will pop into view and you can zoom in and out using click and drag on the right mouse button translate using the middle and then rotate using the left one so things are starting to form here kind of nicely i like that so far um, and then what we can do is a use a little bit of knowledge that we have about insect anatomy to know that the head has no spiracles. So what we will do, spiracles are useful for assessing homology, um, but the problem is we want to differentiate inside air from outside air, and the spiracle is a hole that goes from the inside to the outside. So when you paint across that, um, you're getting inside air and outside air, and it's hard to remove the outside air. I will show you why that's the case in just a second. So what we'll do is we'll paint here just the head and this will give us both inside air and outside air, which is interesting to look at like that, but not what we want. So the next thing I'll do to easily get rid of this outside air, we'll do island removal. So I want to remove the selected island, which is the stuff on the outside. And there we go. That is the trachea of the head. There's a little bit of extra there. You can hold down the shift key and mouse over to see where that is. There's a little bit there that happens to be like, I think that's in between the mandible and the head. 
click there and get rid of it. Now, if there are areas where the inside and the outside air are connected, this will not work. When you click to remove the outside air, it will be connected to the inside air and you will wind up removing everything. So, for to do that, this is kind of where all the work comes in, is we need to find the spiracles. The easiest way to find spiracles is to turn on volume rendering. Tweak our transfer function appropriately and using our knowledge of insect anatomy. There is one of them right there. So what we'll do is we'll put our mouse here, hold down the shift key, move the mouse a little bit, and that will jump slices to our spiracle. This assumes, of course, I should point this out, that you have here jump slices centered. If this is selected here, that means that when you hold down the shift key, it'll jump all the slices to wherever the mouse is, and it will center them in each view. I've got to make sure that's turned on. So as we can see right here, this is a spiracle. Turn off volume rendering for now because it eats up CPU time. And what we will do is we have to paint very carefully in here. Turn on paint again. paint just the inside here. Now we can see that there's probably a little bit outside there. This is kind of where the spiracle is. So this bit here is actually on the outside. If we scroll through, uh, maybe it's not, I take it back. That actually might be real tricky. But just for the sake of argument, let's paint a little bit on the outside here. So you can see that this kind of glob here is on the outside, and all this other stuff is on the inside. There's a number of ways to fix this. You can go through and very manually turn off sphere brush when you erase, turn off editable intensity range when you erase, go through and erase slice by slice. I'm using the scroll wheel to change slices here. You can also use the arrow keys. Erase slice by slice the things you don't want. Note again, I've turned off sphere brush for erase. And there and so on. You can see we're kind of like cleaning up this little bit here. Sometimes if you clean up enough, you can go through, if you remember from the last video, you can use a scissors tool to remove stuff. Again, you got to be careful to not remove things that you want to keep. Okay, go like that. And like that. That's kind of the beginning of it. And go through and finish cleaning up the rest of it. But uh, as you can see, this is a fairly time consuming process. Um, in general, um, a reasonably complex scan. Um, I've been doing this for some years now, and a reasonably complex scan uh, will probably take me between one and two weeks to do the entire trachea of it. Um, Certain things I've learned over the years I've been able to speed it up that I've kind of included in this video. Island removal is one, a threshold brush is one, um, using the scissors is another one. Um, but, but again, anything that I'm doing here, um, this is how I do it. Um, this is not necessarily the only way, um, and it's, it's, it's absolutely not the only way, and it's probably not the best way. So uh, I would love any comments or suggestions anyone has for better ways to do this or ways to speed it up or, you know, tell me I'm completely wrong and I've wasted half my life doing this. Um, so anyway, this is kind of what I used to do all the tracheal architecture for the insects that were used in the bulletin publication that I showed in the first video. So hopefully this will get you started. Uh, for anyone who's interested in doing this kind of work, um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. Um, I'll try to get to them as quickly as I can, um, or you can contact me in any other way through the museum or anything like that. So if you've watched this far, thanks very much for your time, and I hope this was useful to you, um, and uh, best of luck.